It's what many people have been calling for, arrests. In the shooting death of a jogger in a Brunswick neighborhood, we got these mug shots of Gregory and Travis McMichael within the past 15 minutes. Late this evening, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation announced charges against Gregory and Travis McMichael for killing Ahmad Arbery. The charges, murder and aggravated assault. The arrest came just two days after this video showing Arbery's killing surfaced on social media. It started an investigation by the GBI and an outcry from people, celebrities, and political figures across the nation. Now, here is what we know about this arrest. When GBI investigators arrived at the McMichaels' home around 8 o'clock, a neighbor tells me the shooter, 34-year-old Travis McMichael, was playing with his 2-year-old son in the backyard when he was put into handcuffs. His father, Gregory, a former Brunswick district attorney investigator, was taken into custody inside the house. One of the arresting officers was consoling Travis McMichael by patting him on the back. Travis was on the verge of tears while being led away. The McMichaels were taken into custody in less than five minutes. News for Jack's reporter Maggie Lorenz joins us live in Brunswick in the neighborhood where this all happened. Maggie, what are you seeing there tonight? Tarek, we just drove through the neighborhood. It's dark, it's quiet, neighbors are inside, but this is the neighborhood, Satilla Shores, where Arbery was shot and killed in broad daylight back in February. Take a look at these photos. We got these sent to us from a News for Jacks viewer at the scene of the arrest of Gregory and Travis McMichael. They were both charged with murder and aggravated assault and were booked into the Glen County Jail. The GBI announced the arrest the day after it began its own investigation at the request of an outside prosecutor. The McMichaels, who pursued Arbery in a pickup truck, told police they believed Arbery was a burglar. In the last 15 minutes, we just got their mugshots again. Here's another look at them from the Glen County Sheriff's Office. And then tonight, the Georgia Attorney General's Office tweeted out this response. We are grateful the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has taken quick and decisive action. This tragedy cannot be undone, but this is the first step in what I am confident will be a swift road to justice. News for Jax will have a crew here ahead of tomorrow morning's press conference at 9 o'clock here in Brunswick. I'll have another live report coming up tonight at 11. For now, reporting live in Brunswick, I'm Maggie Lorenz, Channel 4, the local station. Had the chance to speak with Ahmad Arbery's football coach and two of his best friends tonight about the arrest right after it happened. These three guys just happened to be together, trying to figure out the next steps for demonstrations and social media campaigns. They told me they are joyful after waiting 74 days for these arrests to finally see these men taken into custody, but they say they won't really feel like justice is served until everyone involved is held accountable. Until they stand trial, yeah. and you know, uh, be, 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 be punished for what they, you know, they're done, this tragedy, um, I, I think that'll give me the, the, the joy that I do need, the satisfaction is for our family, friends, and everybody in this community. Um, I think this tragedy, you know, um, it truly, you know, not only spark this community, but it sparked this world in a different way. We're a community that trusts law enforcement. We had no idea the different things that were going on. I mean, our DA ran unopposed for 24 years. Nobody ran against her. We are a community that trusts law enforcement. And obviously what we're finding out now um, with the interim chief, um, Jay Wiggins, he's going to have to regain the trust of our community. These three young men say they want everyone held accountable from top to bottom, including responding officers with the Glen County Police Department. The officer who told Ahmad Arbery's mother her son was shot in the yard while committing a burglary by the homeowner, which was a lie. All of those involved in the DA's office in Waycross and Weir County, those three young men say this was a cover-up. Even after the arrest, the News for Jack's team is asking the questions many people are asking us. We found out why the Waycross State Attorney's Office recommended not prosecuting Gregory McMichael and Travis. And we also found out who shot the cell phone video and released it. Here's how investigators got to this point. After viewing the cell phone video, the autopsy reports and witness statements from this deadly confrontation, Waycross District Attorney George Barnhill says he didn't see grounds for an arrest based on the following. In a letter to a Glen County captain, he writes, Greg McMichael, his son Travis, and Brian Williams appear to be in hot pursuit of a burglary suspect with solid first-hand probable cause in their neighborhood and asking, telling him to stop. He goes on to write, it appears their intent was to stop and hold this criminal suspect until law enforcement arrived. 
He said it was within the scope of a citizen's arrest. But a Brunswick criminal defense attorney says that is not his interpretation of the citizen's arrest law or the facts. But what's critical about Georgia's law, although you are allowed to detain someone as a citizen, if you think they've committed a crime, you cannot use excessive force. So even if there was a crime committed and he was trying to hold on to Mr. Arbery to wait for the police, you cannot then escalate it as I think happened in this case. We also now know who shot this cell phone video of the deadly confrontation. According to Arbery's attorney, Lee Merritt, a man named William Roddy Bryan filmed the shooting of Arbery. Lawyers say Bryan told police he chased Arbery, who he and McMichael suspected was a burglar. Bryan's attorneys leaked the video, hoping that it would substantiate the McMichael's claim of self-defense. But instead, the video has created more questions about why no one was ever detained. I don't think this is a good self-defense case for Mr. McMichael. I mean, number one, you see Arbery running down the street. Uh, he is not approaching the McMichaels. He's not uh, threatening them. He doesn't present any sort of threat whatsoever. They are chasing him. And then at the point where Travis McMichael has the gun and is pointing it at Arbery, it is totally reasonable and justified for Mr. Arbery to try to defend himself. So I don't think that Travis McMichael can say I was acting in self-defense when it appears from the video that he was the aggressor in the situation. The Glenn County Commission plans to release information soon on the Glenn County Police Department's involvement in the aftermath of the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery and subsequent decisions made by police and county personnel. Yesterday, Brunswick Mayor, members of the NAACP, and local judges in the area called for the firing of the Glenn County Police Chief John Powell, who was the county's top cop at the time. News of the arrest tonight spread quickly on social media as well. And Joy Purdy joins us now. Joy, you've been looking online to see what people are saying. Yes, Mary Tarek, this story of the arrests has blown up on Twitter. It seems to be just traveling like wildfire. And so many people who have commented on the News for Jack's Facebook page are calling for not just an investigation into the father and son now charged in Ahmaud Aubrey's death. They also want to see the original DA and prosecutor investigated for the way the case was initially handled. So here are just some of the comments we pulled from our Facebook page. Heather Hackley, for example, writes, it took too long and it's only because of all social media publicity that it has finally happened. But I pray his family will now get the justice they deserve. Keith Waugh writes, remember, innocent till proven guilty. I'm not judging till the truth comes out. And for everyone that does, y'all just as bad as those two for judging. And Rachel Atterbury says, hoping justice will be served. This will never replace what this family is missing, but these men need to be held accountable. Now, as you know, there have been public comments on Twitter by lawmakers and celebrities like basketball star LeBron James, singer Justin Timberlake, also former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Chuck Schumer from New York. Well, tonight, no comments yet from any of them. Tarek, Mary? Joy, thank you. Well, despite tonight's arrest, the GBI says the investigation into the death of Ahmad Arbery is ongoing, and they are asking anyone who has information to contact the agency at 1-800-597-TIPS. Again, they will be releasing new information about the case and the arrest tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. News 4 Jax will have crews in southeast Georgia to bring you coverage live on air and on newsforjax.com.